welcome everybody and Merry Christmas. Um, that's the most important thing to say, obviously. Um, so we've got the usual gang of um, me, uh, Monica and Laura on here. So uh, Monica and I work for RE3, which is the council um, partnership in um, Bracknell, Reading and Wokingham. And Laura works for our contractor and is, our, um, is the lady who runs our recycling uh, facility. Um, so we're on hand to kind of answer any questions. We're going to go through a pre short presentation, as you know, on 12 days of Christmas recycling. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end to do some um, questions and, uh, and chat. And um, we've sort of done a few of these over the last couple of months um, for obvious reasons, um, not really been able to get people in and be together and everything. And, and that's really good fun at the end. So um, hope everyone's going to enjoy, um, enjoy that. So uh, first point um, is um, we we'll just put everyone on mute to start off with. Um, well, there'll be a chance, as I said, for some ch chit chat at the end and for your questions. You can use the reactions um, at the bottom of your screen. There's also um, the chat window where you can put questions in and, and we'll use that at the end. So if you think of something during the course of the presentation, stick it in there and then we can come back to it at the end. Um, there are going to be some polls. I think we're going to start fairly quickly with a poll. Um, so if you can um, take part in those, that's always really good as well. Um, and if you've got anything really um, urgent, you can raise your hand. Um, so this is uh, a, a presentation by our, about and by RE3. Um, three councils working together, um, managing um, the waste of nearly half a million people across Bracknell, Reading and Wokingham. And, and you probably already know our two sites, one in Reading and one in, in Bracknell. Um, in fact, we're coming live, or I'm coming live from the one in Reading. Um, here are some um, additional facts. Um, <coughs> we, we find that um, Christmas has become a time of great consumption and there's lots of good reasons for that. And, um, and it's, it's really enjoyable. Um, but obviously from a waste point of view, we also have a, uh, have a different sort of interest. So you can see there's some interesting facts about the kind of Christmas period. Um, 13,350 tonnes of bottles um, during the December and January pe period. That's 30% more than normal in terms of consumption. Um, it may even be that that's that succeeded this year because everyone's going to be celebrating in a slightly different way. A billion Christmas cards, um, 227,000 miles of wrapping paper, which is incredible, um, and 10 million turkeys. Um, not, not a good time to be a turkey, obviously. Um, or I suppose maybe it is. Um, here's our first day we're going to do 12 days and monica's done a, another brilliant presentation um here for us we're going to give you some facts about christmas based on the 12 days so on the first day of christmas um we're going to buy a christmas tree and we wanted to look at what was going to be the most eco-friendly way of doing it and the one that you've already got if, if you've got one already is the best one if you if you grow one in your garden if you've got a one that you've had in the family a reusable one that you've had in the family that's the one that you should continue using because of course all the embodied energy and all of the stuff that's gone into producing it whatever form it's in um is still being used and has still got a life um if you're going to get a new one though however probably a real tree is the best option um there's a rather interesting and intriguing opportunity locally um that i've not seen elsewhere um, to hire a Christmas tree. There's a company in Arborfield that will allow people to hire a Christmas tree each year. Um, and um, I understand that you can have the same one back um, the next year. Um, you obviously have to arrange for its return. You just water it over the Christmas pier and decorate it as you'd like. And then it goes back into the, in, and grows for another year. Um, could be quite, you, quite interesting if they, how big they get if you had them over a long period of time. Um, but that's a really, really nice opportunity uh, and, uh, and certainly um, allows for people to be to, to sort of, I suppose, have a more reuse angle on their Christmas tree rather than um, uh, than, than that kind of cycle of, of um, even if we recycle the Christmas tree, even if we compost it, for example, 
um, is going back into the ground, that's good, but probably having a growing one is better. And an artificial tree, um, we think that um, you have to have it for around 10 years in terms of um, the kind of embedded, embodied, sorry, uh, carbon um, compared with a real tree. Um, so those are the three options there for, for Christmas trees. Um, on the second day of Christmas, um, we bought some recycled Christmas cards. Um, there's lots of things you can do with Christmas cards and we're probably, you know, to an extent teaching granny to suck eggs a little bit here, um, if you know what I mean, because um, you're probably already doing all of this. Um, Christmas cards can be put in your recycling bin. Um, uh, and Laura's plant will will ensure that they're sorted and then ultimately recycled. Try and avoid the ones that have got lots and lots of glitter on them if you can. Um, mm. And uh, you may have seen we did a uh, a campaign over the course of the autumn around batteries and battery safety. Um, so uh, fires can be started with by batteries, potentially even the tiny little ones that are in Christmas cards for for um, for lights or for music. Um, so if you can remove any that you're going to recycle, that's really really good. And of course, this is the bit that probably everyone's already doing. Um, if you've got Christmas cards. Um, when it comes to taking all your decorations down and stuff, um, we tend to rip the front off and use that for tags and for things during the course of the year. And then you can recycle the bit with the names on it and everything else. Um, and that's, the, that's, that's a good tip. So the third day, um, on the third day of Christmas, um, electricals. Sometimes people treat themselves, sometimes people get new electricals for Christmas. Um, a, another one of our campaigns over the course of the autumn was around um, the recycling and, and reuse of, of we. Um, the points that we're putting here are if you need to invest in some new Christmas lights, um, don't bung them away, don't bin them. Um, if you're in Reading, there's a we collection. If not, bring them to our two facilities, either the, the, the tip in Reading or the one in Bracknell. Um, anything that's got a plug or a battery can actually be recycled. So please don't um, chuck away your electricals. Um, we will try and give them a new lease of life or at the very least, we will ensure that they're recycled. And that's really important. There's um, a, an immense amount of, 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 of this sort of stuff out there, um, which can still be recycled cables, the appliances themselves, all that sort of stuff. And it's really important that we capture as much of that as much of that as possible. Cardboard, another big one at Christmas. On the fourth day of Christmas, we recycled your cardboard. Now this is something that you're doing throughout the year anyway, but obviously people appreciate. Um, and this year more than most, we're getting an awful lot of stuff delivered to us rather than going and buying it. Um, uh, and so we've probably got even more cardboard packaging than we would normally have. Um, if you can make sure that you re remove any of the kind of plastic and polystyrene that might come with, depending on what you're, you're having delivered, keep it dry. Um, it's really, really important. Um, in, as, the econ as the economy, the global economy has struggled, um, the markets for cardboard have got a lot tighter and the restrictions and the expectations that they place on people like councils and like Laura's um, company are, are getting higher and higher all the time. Wet cardboard um, does present them with some problems. It begins to degrade a little bit. Um, and so they want dry cardboard. So anything that you can do to keep your card and your fiber products that you're getting rid of, the packaging, paper, card, any of the things like that, if you can keep it dry, that's really good. Um, all three councils, um, Bracknell, Reading and Wokingham will collect excess cardboard if you can't get it all in your uh, recycling box or bin over the festive period. They will take cardboard from the side. You know, obviously, that normally you have to get it in a box or a bin. But for the for the Christmas period, um, they will take it. Um, and there's an interesting fact there. that um, An extra 300,000 tonnes of cardboard is is used during the festive period um now i don't know because i've not been anywhere near london for quite a long time but i know that when 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 everyone was doing everything um 
it looked a bit like Big Ben was wrapped up anyway. There's a lot of work going on there at the moment. So um, that gives you a sense of how much um, 260,000 Big Bens is quite a lot. Um, so that's an immense amount of additional cardboard that gets used at this time of year. And it possibly even more than that. That's, that's those figures are probably, I think, from a normal year. Um, so we're going to go crazy on cardboard this year. But the good news is there are, there are means to recycle it. On the fifth day of Christmas, we chose recyclable wrapping paper. Now then, this is an interesting little sort of almost interactive bit. Um, not all paper is recyclable, but we know that there are lots more uh, places that are selling recyclable paper. Sorry, I said it's not recyclable. Not all of it is recycled. Um, we know it can be recycled. If you can remove any, again, a bit like we said about the cardboard, if you can remove any other items, try and get most of the sellotape off you can. We'd always rather have it than not. Um, and the cardboard in a roll. Um, there is a uh, there is a bit of a problem with some of the shiny and the glittery um, paper. I'm just going to do a, a scrunch test for you here. If 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 you if you can if you can scrunch your paper up a bit like this foil and it stays scrunched, you can recycle it. If it's this sort of stuff that that bounces back. That's not good and that can't be recycled. So um, don't don't try and recycle that. And probably if you can, even though it's shiny and exciting, probably don't try and buy don't buy it um, if you if you're given an opportunity. Um, so that's the test. But after that, you can recycle it. And all the same things that we said about the cardboard are true as well. Um, put it in your recycling, capture all of it, and we will recycle it. On the sixth day. Um, recycle all your sweet tins. Now, that picture is something that will be familiar to you. Um, hopefully everyone's got their, their, themselves a nice supply of, of Christmas chocolates right now. Um, and if you have, please make sure, if you're not gonna put the tin or the uh, tub to use afterwards, please make sure you give it to us to recycle it. Um, the only problem that we'd have, and we don't think there are any black um, plastic tubs on the market, um, but the only thing, problem we think we would have is if it was a black one. Um, and as we said in our previous um, sessions on this subject, the black plastic is a problem. It's got uh, black pigment in it, so it, that reduces the amount of use that that plastic can have. And also it causes some problems for our plants, which use optical sorters. Um, it, they, they, they find it very hard to, to tell whether it's plastic or what it is, in fact. Um, but all of that can be recycled. So that's really that would be a really really great outcome. Just take the chocolate out and leave the rest for us to recycle. And I think I'm going to hand over to Laura now. Yeah, brilliant. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so on the seventh day of Christmas, we would remind you to recycle your aluminium foil. So this is things from your mince pies, from when you've been cooking at home maybe even a takeaway tray if you don't fancy making a turkey on Christmas day. Um, all of that can be recycled. If you've got the smaller bits, um, like from the sweet boxes, the, um, some of them get wrapped in uh, the foil. Keep those, wrap them up, wrap them inside of a bigger bit of foil and put that in a bigger bit of foil. So it's a big ball of aluminium. And then when it comes to site, we can take that ball, we can recycle it all together. Because the little bits, they, they can get lost in our system. Whereas if you can build it into a big tray, that's perfect. And like the tip that Monica's put on there for you, if you have an aluminium tray from a takeaway possibly, keep that as your little mini recycling bin because that might help you to remember to recycle those extra little bits of foil that sometimes we might forget about. On the eighth day of Christmas, remember to reuse. So not everything um, needs to be thrown away. A lot of things we can reuse, whether that's your Christmas decorations, maybe, a gift that you didn't particularly like or want from a distant auntie. Um, so bring those bits to the recycling when you bring all your cardboard for us, bring those extra parts, whether it's a, a bauble or whatever it is, and we can use that and give that to somebody and give it a second life rather than going into one of the bays and possibly going to landfill or energy from waste. 
we work with Sue Ryder, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of when you come to our site. And last year we raised £17,000 from the items that you brought to site that we then gave to them, which they could sell in their shops. And I'm sure that amount of money for a charity like Sue Ryder goes a really long way. So make sure you keep bringing all of your things to site for us. Um, if you've been to our site um, recently, you might have noticed that we've got a RE3 paint reuse scheme that we've just started as well. So we're encouraging people to bring maybe those tubs of paint that you bought years ago that you've left in the cupboard, bring them to site. And then other people or community groups like Scouts or um, the Brownies can come and take those paint tins and they can use that paint rather than again, it not being, being given a second chance. So if you're interested, then definitely pop down and have a little look. We've had a few people that have been interested the last few days. On the ninth day of Christmas, remember to recycle batteries. So I know that Oliver mentioned this before when it came to the cards, but um, if anyone's got children, grandchildren, whatever, they're gonna get toys with batteries and I'm sure that they'll be maybe taken out of some things very quickly. Um, but unfortunately batteries are rather a large issue for especially waste sites. I'm not sure if anyone saw the BBC News article um, a few weeks ago, but that one actually featured the small mead site because um, we had had a fire um, in October, I believe it was. Um, so and that was caused by someone throwing a battery into the recycling bin and they are extremely volatile. And if they're not recycled properly, then they can be a huge risk to staff and to the facility and then obviously to your recycling. So please don't put them in your recycling or even your normal rubbish bin. Um, keep them, maybe put a pot to one side, collect them all up. And then when you're bringing other things to site, you can pop down and bring them to us. Um, some supermarkets have them. Um, I think Sainsbury's do, I think Aldi, Lidl, um, as you're sort of leaving, they have a stand by the door. So please make sure that you get rid of those in a um, sensible way. That'd be great. On the 10th day of Christmas, reduce and recycle your food waste. Um, I think that maybe because of um, the year that we've had and the restrictions in place over Christmas, I think people have bought a lot less food than they normally would because people are probably cooking for a few less people than maybe is normal. And I think that's been really good to help people realize of how much we do sort of spend and overindulge at Christmas that we don't really need to. So you can see there that seven in 10 people say that they buy way more food than they need to at Christmas time. I think we're all a little bit guilty of that. So I think if we can consciously think about that before we buy it, then that's great. And then like it says there, freezer leftovers, put it in your freezer, make a turkey curry a few days afterwards or a nice turkey sandwich the next day. And if there's anything that you can't keep or is you know the scraps at the end, definitely use your compost bin or your food bin. I think that UK residents will waste 54 million platefuls of food during December. Gosh, sounds like a lot, doesn't it, when you think about it that way. So on our um, website, Love Food, Hate Waste, we might give you some tips and tricks on how to store food and how to keep it fresh. And hopefully we can all reduce our intake. On the 11th day of Christmas, recycle your Christmas treats packaging. So we can take all your pots, tubs and trays uh, um, in your recycling bins and we will recycle every single one of them here in our Merth. So your ice cream tubs or your Christmas pudding tubs, um, cream, whatever it is, give it a little spill out under the sink. You don't have to clean it religiously. It doesn't go through the dishwasher or anything like that, but give it a nice rinse put it in your recycling bin and we will take care of the rest. And on the last day, the 12th day of Christmas, remember about changes to waste collection days. So um, um, but make sure you keep an eye on that. So you're putting out your bins on the right day, you don't miss it because there's nothing worse when you've got bins full of cardboard if you're gonna miss the recycling day. Um, and I think also it will be on your council's website. So if you do lose that bit of paper, or you're not sure, definitely check on there. And of course, if you'd like to come down to site, make sure that you're aware that the sites are open every day eight till six but we will be closed on christmas day boxing day and new year's day and christmas eve and new year's eve we will be closing at 4 p.m but the rest of the time we're here to help you recycle as much as you can and of course don't forget to book in last one and when the celebration's over recycle all your glass bottles and jars so like oliver said it's gonna be a lot more consumed 
during um, December, January, I think rightfully so after this last year. Um, so please make sure that you take everything to the bottle banks either at site or various points around the three boroughs. Keep your tops on the lids. We can recycle those as well, so make sure you leave them on. And our two trucks, Kate Binsler and Jar Jar Clinks, are extremely busy. We've already scheduled in lots of extra collections, but please make sure that you get in touch with us if there are any problems. You can call the number and we'll try and empty it as soon as we can. So yeah, just a very quick final thanks to me for Laura's staff because everyone's waste. Um, we've got three really, really efficient waste collection teams and you'll have seen their vehicles going around. But what they collect ends up in one place ultimately, particularly the recycling, and it goes through all the people that work work with Laura. Um, so throughout all of this period, they've been dealing with bags of tissues and everyone's rubbish and everything, which, um, as you can appreciate, in terms of social distances, distancing does present itself with a few problems. So um, just a quick thanks with your indulgence um, to all of them. Thanks to Laura for joining us. Thanks to all of you. Have a lovely Christmas and uh, we'll see you next year. Cheers. <laughs>